I want to thank God that our daddy is here again for the last to mop up the whole thing. Like you had, like you had him one day. Let me say something. Yes. Ah, daddy, allow me to say something. I have not finished. I must say something. Praise the Lord. There are things I want to tell all of us. Some years ago, I was terribly attacked. And if you say attacked, I was attacked frontally, spiritually, every how. I've never seen it before. And I want to thank God. I thought I was, I was, I was a minister, but I didn't know that there is something else. The grace of pastoral ministry, everybody doesn't have it. That day will call my line Sometimes my phone will be up throughout the day because I'll be coughing and for hours, non-stop, it was a mysterious sickness. Daddy will be getting, maybe my phone is on, Daddy will get me. He was praying with me every day. This sickness lasted for three and a half years. I was on oxygen eight times. I came back to life. Is somebody hearing me now? And that's why I can tell you, since they didn't keep me there, they will keep me now. I have not moved. Is somebody hearing me here? God kept me alive for a purpose. And I want to tell you, Daddy was there. And God told me from the first week before the sickness, he said, This sickness will not kill you. He said, But I'm returning you back to hold a high standard of righteousness for me. And, brethren, I want all of us, there are certain people God have left. And I want to tell you, the worst mistake you make in this life. And that's what one of the doors that opened up my sickness. The worst mistake you make, not because they have money, that some of them, God is not too happy with them. You get close, you see the pain they have. The worst mistake you can make is continue to romance with people God have left. Or God is no more pleased with. Brethren, I want to thank God as we welcome our daddy, daddy Theo. <laughs> Amen. Amen. His words were bringing tears into my eyes. I don't know he was coming. He, as he was, I was coming down. I told him, I said, they cannot kill you. I didn't know he was going to say anything. I've known several attempts against his life. Several attempts against his life. I said, don't be afraid. Stand for what Baba calls you for. Say, you need calling. Right. You ready to war? They cannot kill you. His name is higher than every other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. Up your answer, Heavenly Father. 
I am ready to contend for the faith. And keep contending for the faith. All the days of my life, I receive grace from your throne. Thank you, Lord. Father, help me. Lord, as I want to speak your word now, help me by your grace. I receive special message for this special time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. I want to thank God. You can please be seated. For how marvelously he's been dealing with us since the program started on Sunday. And I want to thank you. Look at your multitudes who are seated, hearing God's word, line upon line, precept upon precept. The final message I want to talk now on, on is projecting the faith in a godless generation. We all know that we are living in a godless generation. We are living in a perverse generation. We are living in an untoward generation. How do you keep the faith and protect the faith? We have been told that it's not in trying to live by faith. No. You have been told that the faith is the entire body of truth as taught by Christ. What Christ lived, died, and resurrected for. The entirety of the apostolic doctrines and lifestyle. How do we project this faith in a godless generation? Listen to me. There are five things that are very basic. You must be ready to project the purity of the faith. Secondly, you will be re must be ready to project the peculiarity of the faith. And that is at all times. Remember, our team is contending. <laughs> it is present continuous. There's no time you stop contending. I'm still going to continue that. It's something you do and you keep doing uh, until you come to the feet of the Lord when you breathe your lives. You keep contending. You contend against your flesh. You contend against your force. At times you contend against your family. Hmm. You contend against your friends. You contend against familiar and unfamiliar situations. It's a continuous thing. When we talk about contending, you contend when, even when things are pleasant and unpleasant. When things are difficult. It's a serious issue. You see? When you understand what it means to contend for the faith, you don't backslide. When you are put on discipline, you keep contending for the faith. You don't misbehave. You don't act any out. Today, we can't discipline people. They say they will run away from church. But a man who knows that he ought to contend for the faith does not depart from the faith at any given time. You keep contending in spite of what is happening. So I said you must project the purity of the faith. Project the peculiarity of the faith. Project the potency of the faith. You don't need anything outside the faith. It's so painful that you have some unguided people who get involved in occultism. That's the worst thing any human being 
Christian or non-Christian can get involved in. What with occultism give to you outside the faith? The faith is complete. The faith is competent. And the faith will do beyond your wisdom. Contend for the preciousness of the faith. And contend for the preserving power of the faith. You see, from what Paul wrote to Timothy, we are living in the days when people will not be able to stay strictly with the faith. In First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, even ye to the spirits and doctrines of the devil. Let me stop there. Some, many, shall depart from the faith. Listen. Bishops will depart from the faith. Archbishops will depart from the faith. Ecclesiastical gurus will depart from the faith. And we have been warned. If there is no danger, there will be no need for warning. Some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirit, there will be greater influence, greater activity against of seducing spirit in the last time. They will come with seductive projections, seductive manipulations, seductive teachings, seductive lifestyle. The doesn't matter syndrome will be very, very common in the last days. Seducing spirits and funny doctrines, doctrines of the devil. May it not get close to you in the name of Jesus. So Paul was warning, talking to Timothy and also talking to everybody in the church. Brethren, we must not toy with the faith. We must not trivialize the faith. We must not tamper with the entirety of the faith. Don't add. Don't take away. Hold the faith firmly. Hold the faith wholeheartedly. Hold the faith fervently. Hold the faith faithfully. Because these days we are living in, there are so many, many funny things going on. May I say this? Don't be confused by personalities. There are some who have a name that they live. Yet, they are there. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1 And unto the angel, the angelos of the church in Sardis, write, These things set in that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Do you hear that? A man who wants to contend for the faith has no favorites. This is my man. Anything he says, I do. No. No. You don't have favorites. The moment a man departs from the faith, you don't treat him just as if nothing has happened. Three things that have affected many people in terms of the faith. 
is sentiment. Don't be sentimental. That's the truth. Don't be sentimental. If you want to contend for the faith, don't act under pressure. Don't act under prejudice. Just make sure that you keep following the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we heard about the Holy Spirit. Keep following the Holy Spirit. You want to really contend and keep contending for the faith. At times the arm of flesh will fail us. At times the flesh may be weak. But there's something that keeps on energizing us and driving us on. That is the Holy Spirit. And I pray all of us we keep contending so that we will not run into the trouble of these situations. Now, there will be great, there are great departure from the faith, deviations from the faith, distortions from the faith. But by the grace of God, all we are trying to say now, stand for the faith and project the faith. At all times, in all situations, in all circumstances. Listen to me. All situations. In the day of difficulty, project the faith. In the day of your marriage, project the faith. In the day of your child naming, project the faith. In the day of your pains, project the faith. In the day of mourning, in the day of sorrows, protect the faith. There's no time that you separate the faith from your life that God understands. God does not understand. You all know my story very well. I lost four people in one single day, including my wife of over 30 years. And what do I do? I must project the faith. Go and ask all the city fathers in Enugu. They said that even in pain and sorrow, Pastor Ikewe remains a model for us. You can imagine what it means to be walking behind two coffins. I've gone to the mortuary, saw four dead people, all my people. Four. And finally, we buried the first one, buried the second one, and the last, my wife and my second daughter, anthropologist. What do I do? I need to stand for the faith. I remember some people came from Port Harcourt. Say, sir, you have never seen somebody who had grief. Like you handled it. People were from nation and I know it. We had to use Opara Square because there was no church building that could take us. Yet, after the two was in the center of the old situations. What am I trying to say? At the time of your sorrow. And strictly, I warned everybody nobody must insult my father. I love him. He's my father. Because he has chosen to take home his daughter. He was forced his daughter before he became my wife. I would have wanted to live for about 30 years. I would have wanted to live more. But if God says, time up, daddy, I give you proof. No painful? Yes. I must not misbehave. There's no excuse of misbehaving or pregnant outside the faith at any given time. Let us let us miss people through our lifestyle that the faith is real. That the faith is potent. It's not just when it is convenient. Just like Paul told Timothy, he said, preach the gospel. In season and out of season. Project the faith in season and out of season. Not everywhere. Every time we fake time, that is it. Contending, contending, present continuous at every given time, 
When there's money in your pocket, contend for the faith. When there's no money in your pocket, contend for the faith. When you are understood, contend for the faith. When you are misunderstood, contend for the faith. When things are tough and rough, contend for the faith. When you are being totally misunderstood, look where I'm at. That they have accused me of everything. There's only one thing they will not accuse me of that I am pregnant. <laughs> when you have been accused, right, left, and center, what do you do? Contend for the faith. It's very easy to misbehave, to develop bitterness, to develop unforgiveness. But there is no excuse to go outside the faith. Because we've seen that many will run into that trouble. Look at Timothy. Let me read. Second Timothy chapter 1. I want to read you some parts of there. Let me read from verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. Listen, you add when venerable was teaching. You see, the salvation that reached to people like you, people have been very skeptical. People have been very unfriendly. People who had been very almost unaccommodating. But there was something that happened. They were saved. Listen. If you are not saved, you can never contend for the faith. Not just salvation by theory, but experiential salvation. That is what is happening today. There are members of the choir who are not saved. There are drummers and musicians who are not saved. That's the part of the problem we are having today. That's why we have a lot of abnormalities in the church. Because there are people with pietus who are not saved. Papa, you know that there are bishops who are not saved. So that's why you see increased abnormalities in the church. But here, yeah, it talks about people who have been saved according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer. Mm -hmm. Suffer these things. That's what, you see, there are things to suffer for the state. Except if you are a man given to compromise, that's when you will not suffer. People close to you will misunderstand you. They will call you names. Anywhere you are, they will call you names. I remember when I gave my life to the Lord over 50 years ago, where I was worshiping in the Dioro. But there's something that has been so strong in me, my love for the Lord. And the elders will call the other young people and say, look, Talk to this, your brother. It's always too much. Every time, Jesus. Jesus. They nickname me, oh, Jesus. That this is, oh, Jesus is too much. Hmm? These are the elders who ought to be encouraging me. But that's what happens. But if you are not careful, you become discouraged. You suffer misunderstanding. You suffer mischief. These are things that happen. But when you understand the faith, what moves you? Don't you hear what Paul said in Acts chapter 20? And that should be you, that should be me. Acts chapter 20. See what he said? Verse 23. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds 
and afflictions, abide me. Verse 24, but none of these things move me. Neither can't I my life be unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God that is the faith. The gospel of the grace of God is everything that has to, has to do with We need to stand for this. Project it anywhere, everywhere, every time. You know what we do? Young men, young women, on the day of your wedding, project the faith. Your wedding day is not the greatest day of your life. The greatest day of your life is when you meet with the Lord at his appearing, either for you or for all of us. For some of you, you lose your head, you lose the faith. And after I finish my marriage, I will, I will go and repent. Mm. No! During my first wedding, 40 something years now, I wedded at the CPM church in Lagos. I had a prayer partner, we see. He, was, he has retired now from the Christ Apostolic Church. He came to pick me. It's Pastor Solo. I said, Pastor Solo, before we leave, I was lecturing at the Bible School, the National Bible Training Center in Lagos. I said, please, and I was missions director, let us pray very well. I want to know what makes people lose their head. What makes people lose their faith on the day of their wedding? They said something just carry people away. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed. I entered his car. Took me to the church. They sat us down. When they invited the groom, then after that, invited the bride. And they started the ceremony. I was looking at my time. By then they finished everything. It was just about 30 minutes. I said, stupidity of man. So, all my consecration of all the years, I will just spoil everything with a 30 minute event. This is my children. The problem is that many of you don't have consecration. So you don't know what it means to lose anything. I can tell you before God that as I sat down there, every minute I was praying. I sat down there, but I was not there. I wanted to know that demon that makes people misbehave on the day of their wedding. That makes people to desecrate the faith, deviate from the faith, diminish from the faith. Listen to me. You determine that even on my wedding day, I will keep the faith. I will contend for the faith. I will let people know that this faith is precious. More precious than wedding. More precious than what my family will have to say. Listen, my elder brother was a senior officer in the coast. In fact, it was the two IC at Tinker Island. He had most money. Multi millionaire. I told the wife, I say I'm the principal actor in this event, not my brother. So don't do things as he wants them. You do things as I want them. The faith! He has so much money. That's the truth. All the people from Warri put them in a very good hotel. He has that money. But money is not everything. I stood my ground for what I wanted. When the people came, I said, some of you have not seen you for the past 20 years. And I may not see some of you for the next 20 years. Some of you are so foolish that what you have built, 
you allow three hour ceremony to spoil it. But the problem is that you have nearly not built anything. If you have built something you are keeping to the faith, you guard it jealously. What do I say? Ah, any day, any time. It is so precious to me. And then listen to me. People know those who stand and project the faith. They give you an unusual respect. But if you are just somebody who is just a fair weather person concerning the faith, we thought that somebody, Alfred, we thought he was a serious person. In my wedding, we have over 20 nations presented. That's the truth. From Ethiopia, from Tanzania, from Malawi, from Kenya. We were all there. They want to know this man who has been traveling all over. This man who has been talking to us on missions and evangelism. This man who has been teaching us hermeneutics. We want to see why his wedding will be like. That's been my life. I am here now. The next two weeks I'll be in Israel. I'm going there to preach. God wants me to be there. As I'm coming back from Israel, I'll be in Abba. As I leave Abba, I'll be going to Italy. Just that's been my life. Always on the move. But let me say this. One thing you should guard, those of you who travel, just like I travel, you must know how to keep the faith. It's very easy to lose the faith as a traveler. Because there are forces. I remember one day I was leaving Mali, I think. When I was leaving Mali for Senegal, we were to go to the airport. I was outside. When one of these doctors of Belia came and greeted me very well. And he said, If you are there, I don't care. I said, Pukwe, do fair crowd. Don't go and do what? He said, Do fair Anything and everything. Remember? One of the greatest problems of traveling ministers is that you are open to temptation. Venerable, I respect you. You are always living with your wife. You cannot be over careful without doctors of Belia. Who are ready? I tell you, there's somebody begging you that you let's go in and two fat two, let's go and drink. And fortunately, she now entered the taxi. We were calling to the airport, and now she was ashamed. I said, let's preach to her. So, you see, we must be careful that these precious things you are holding. I was in Cote d'Ivoire sometime. And they took me to an hotel. I, I saw what was going and go out. I said, please, sir. I told the taxi man, I said, I cannot sleep in this place. He said, most places are full. See, if I don't mind, you can take me to his house. I can stay in the, in the sitting room. I said, very, very fine. A man who stands for the faith is a dogged man. You are dogged. You are disciplined. That's the truth. You are not just a sissy. I came in on Tuesday, on Sunday. I have preached two times. Just as we are coming, I did. They said, please come, come. They need you. If not, the people will scatter. I said, I'm ready. I'm rushing down. My protocol man was saying, that is why not rest a bit. I said, they have a good reason for wanting me to come now. Because they are also concerned for the people. And I came, I preached. That was the third time in the day. At least at over 70. Oh, you know. You are dogged. You are rugged. Not just pampering the body. The faith. We must all be ready to keep and project this faith. Let people see the beauty of the faith. Let people see the glory of the faith. Let people see the uniqueness of the faith. Uh -uh. Let people desire this faith through us. Huh? 
Let them desire it. Let them know that when you know, let them know that ah, what is making this person with all these difficulties? Is this standing? Because he knows that he's carrying something and is holding to something that is unique, that is outstanding. I pray the Lord will help you mightily in Jesus' name. So please, let us stand the danger of departing from the faith. You see, like where we read in First Timothy chapter 4, many will depart from the faith. And this will be a common feature in the end time. Why? There's many reasons. Number one, forgetfulness of the world. The world of God in every area never forget it. There's a world, the world of God controlling every aspect of life. Your day-to-day living, your service, your goodness, everything. Stay by the world. Don't forget it. <laughs> Number two. Why do people depart from the faith? By willing to follow the ways of the world. The world is a backsliding place. The world is a place that you should all know that it is a place that the devil is reigning supreme, is the prince of this world. Don't allow the ways of the world to control you or to influence you. Then another major problem is following the situations of multitudes. The word of God says, please do not follow the multitude to do evil. Uh, let me talk to you young ministers. Don't do things because other ministers are doing it. Don't do something because other ministries are doing it. When we started this present work about 28 years ago, I told them, we are not sister or brother to any other church or organization. We are not an extension of any church. This is a unique work, a distinct work by the Almighty. We are ready to follow exactly what God wants us to do. All the common practices, all the common situations. And this is what Church A has done. Church A has done. Up to today, I don't do things because of what churches are doing. I only do what God wants me to do. You must have a distinctiveness. Wow! Everybody's called. I was talking to Uncle Chima. I said, you are a war man. You are a warrior. Don't allow anybody to take away that warring spirit from you. Even though you are doing this, for, don't forget your basic calling. That is a warrior. And I know our beloved mommy at times we want to say, why you, why you, why you, why you. But also to so if you realize that my husband's calling is what? A warrior. A woman. And he just has to manifest as to give what to make him uncomfortable. And he may not be able to please God. So I like I said, don't follow the way of the multitude. Following fleshly desires and interests will make you to depart from the faith. Going in the way of gains and greed to make you to depart from the faith. Forsaking the ancient landmarks to make you to depart from the faith. Fearing not to be unpopular or be among the minority to make you to depart from the faith. I remember ah, when we started, some people sent for me from different places. That pastor, we hear what you are teaching though. 
that if you continue like this, you will be hungry. You will, be, you will suffer. That nobody teaches all these things and makes it. So you need better think very well and know what you will teach and what you don't teach. But by the grace of God, I have not been hungry for one day. By the grace of God, I have not suffered. I knew it before God and I have not suffered for one day. That's the truth. And anywhere, everywhere, I maintain my... T- I've been to the U.S. two times this year. The last time I was there for about two months. And I keep telling, I said, look, I've not come here to look for your dollars. I said, you don't even have money. That what I can do with money, you cannot do it. You do everything on credit. You buy your television, credit. You buy your car, credit. I said, if you don't care, they will buy your coffin also. Credit. And I, we don't do that. When we go, we go to fight. Because they are a proselytizing nation. Many of you go and they tell you that this is America. What's America? There are cockroaches in America. There are bed bugs in America. There are mosquitoes in America. There are but what, what is it? So what is America? Everything you can think of. I've been preaching in America for over 40 years. I said, there's nothing special here. Because most Africans, the moment they enter America, they throw away their Bible. They say, you just see them start to misbehave. They start to talk anyhow. They start to dress anyhow. Huh? It should not be so. There's nothing special here in being in America. I say, if they don't hear me very well, me too, I struggle to hear all of them. I was talking to my baby, the last one, but the last baby. He's a American engineer, he studied there, married and a dear for an American. I said, my daughter, it's like I hear your husband. <laughs> Clearly than I hear you. He said, that is that. I said, that's the truth. Eh? That is only I say some of the things you are saying, I don't hear. I don't, I don't hear some of these things that ah, you are not in the American. I'm hearing the American. But I'm not, I said, I told her. I said, I'm not hearing you all the things you are saying. So that if you want me to hear you, you speak me to where I will hear very well. So we should come to a point that we realize that. All these things, they are just like vanities. Let's maintain the faith. Whether in America, whether in Jamaica, project the faith. I remember I was at Stephen Alford Institute. You know, he has an institute in Memphis, Tennessee. Stephen Alford Institute of, for, of Biblical Preaching. Normally, I sit at the back. Anywhere I go to, most of the time, even in BFN, in, uh, they are tired. They say, we have tried and tried and tried. We can't move past the two. My sitting in the front does not really add to me. I want to concentrate fully. There's nothing wrong with sitting in the front. Don't misunderstand me. Somebody must sit in the front. You understand? It's only that that is not my pattern. I like being relaxed where I will concentrate fully. So, I stay where I will be able to internalize all that is being taught. Hear me. I need to say this. The partial from the faith is not on it's not just a one day affair. It comes subtly, it comes gradually before you realize it, it becomes a total settled issue. So that's why you need to watch over your life. Am I still 
where I started. Very, very important. The moment your heart starts to deviate, you should know. The moment your heart starts to doubt, you should know. The moment your heart starts to be divided, you should know. Osia 10 verse 2. Say their hearts are divided, therefore they shall be found faulty. Please, know when your heart is divided. Then also know when the enemy is projecting things against you. We heard from Venerable Chima when the enemy struck him. Know when the enemy is doing things. Please don't take the enemy for granted. Let me sound some warning because I will soon run off. Beware of false prophets. There are many false prophets that like Jesus Christ taught in sheep clothing. Number two, beware of old prophets. There are old prophets that have made many young prophets to lose their calling. The young prophet died because he was deceived by the old prophet. When did you start? We have been in this ministry before you were born, and so what? Beware of old prophets who want to tell you stories. Though they say in the water, the age of Methuselah has one to do with the wisdom of Solomon. That you are old prophet does not mean that you have to control my life. Please, let's be careful about that. Never beware of being overconfident. Peter almost lose up. Simon. Simon, Satan desires to act as if you are a witness. Simon, son of Peter, ah, it's not possible. That even if it remains as the Bible with you, you know I mean? I'm ready. You know, it took the mercy of God to get him restored. Brethren, never. Never be overconfident. Don't miss meetings like this. See all these wonderful, precious people of God. I was going yesterday when I asked them, is there still any other message? He said, he said, the person said, he doesn't know, he doesn't have the program. So as I was going, he says, somebody's about to be, I said, who is that person? He said, ah, I was back. I said, I must go and listen to him. I was already there. I watched back. You must be hungry for God. Hungry for his war. Never come to a point that you are overconfident. Okay. You know, I was hearing some young people. Ah, that's so that that they had a revelation. They went to God, and God told them about some minister that this person is too, he has been broken, he's too old to backslide. That's a false message. That message is from the pit of hell. There's no body is too old. The Satan is he, Satan is a master strategist. Until you die. What do you say about the people Moses? The man who is the meekest want to live. Satan does not respect anybody. So please don't be overconfident at any time. Beware of manipulators. Beware of corruptors. Decide firmly for the faith. Look at what the word of God says in first second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. You know this man is a unique apostle. Verse thirteen. Hold fast 
the form of sound words. Twitter has heard of me. In faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 14. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. Hold fast the form of sound doctrine. Sound lifestyle. Sound ministry. It's only sound ministry that will ensure guarantee a sound ending. Listen to me. We must manifest soundness in five areas. In all your ways. Manifest soundness. Number two. In all your words, manifest soundness. Number three, in all your walk with the Lord, manifest soundness. Number four, in your word for the Lord, manifest soundness. Number five, in your worship, manifest soundness. Keep to the faith, project the faith powerfully, graciously. Continually in these 14 areas. Number one, let the faith show in your personality, in your courage, in your manifestations. Let the faith show. Like we are also told, no room for pride, no room for arrogance. Listen to me. The most stupid personality, the most stupid minister, is a proud minister. There's no reason to pride. What you have that is not given to you. What you have that is not from God. Yes, I don't. There's no excuse in this world to be proud. That's the truth. Anything you have is all by grace. That's the first lesson I learned in my calling, Alfred. All you have, all you have is by grace. That's why my first daughter, a medical doctor, her name is not because of me. I call her Grace. And she keeps on telling people, I thank God. Who asked my father to give me that name, Grace? I pray to my father to tell me what to call those children. So I call her Grace. Very, very important because of the circumstances of their birth. The one next to her is a lawyer, a lecturer. That one is grateful because <laughs> she was born after I came out from a great, great attack. And I said, as I see her, she's an embodiment of gratitude. Say, Baba, I am grateful. The next one to her, the doctor also, I call her goodness. Let me not go to that one with you. I'll take my time. Because <laughs> another day, let's leave that alone. So in your personality, project the faith. In your posturing, project the faith. In your policies, project the faith. In your practices, Project the faith. In your personal and family matters, project the faith. In your private and public lifestyle, project the faith. In your parenting, project the faith. In your preachings, project the faith. In your projects, project the faith. In your problems and pains, project the faith. In all your procedures, project the in your persecutions and adversities, project the faith. In your plans and programs, project the faith. In your prayers, project the faith. When Benedict was preaching yesterday, that we got to point that you don't make too much noise in praying. But you come to a point that 
Don't, hmm. Don't you hear what he said? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. He can do exceeding abundantly above what? Whatsoever you ask or just the thought. Just the imagination. And it has been recorded in heaven. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Everything you do at all times must have passed three tests. Number one, the test of scriptures. Number two, the test of saintliness, the test of sanctification. Everything at all times. It must pass the test of serious mindedness. Seven things that must not be in your life. As somebody projecting the faith. Number one, craftiness. Number two, compromise. Number three, carelessness. Number four, crookedness. Number five, covetousness. Number six, conceit. Number seven, carnality. Our preacher this morning talked about carnality. When you have this, it will only tend towards ungodliness and undefined tendencies. What are the things that may help you to protect and project the faith? Number one, sound consecration. You see, we don't preach about consecration anymore. I think if God leads venerable, let's have a whole conference on biblical consecration, entire consecration. That was the joy of our lives. I can't expect anything to affect my consecration. I remember when I was in courtship, April 1981. I think it was, no, that was the beginning point. I think it was May. I was on route to, I think, eight African countries. I was to pass through Togo, where my wife was then. And I said, my sister, there is something that nobody touches in my life. Anybody who touches it has killed me. I said, that's my consecration. I said, my sister, there are some things other women may enjoy which we will not enjoy because of my consecration. And that was how we lived. No complaint, no more money. After we were dead, I think within some few weeks, I was on my way to London. Came back from London, went for training in the U.S. That's it. After the first child was born, within some two weeks, I was off again. When the second child was born, I was in Sri Lanka for crusade. From Sri Lanka, came to London for crusade. When the third child was born, I was already in Enugu. They were indoors. They didn't join me until about three months. When the fourth child was born, I was in Indonesia. For crusade, it's only the fifth child that was born when I was in. But there must be no complaint. You had it yesterday when Benjamin was teaching. That was part of the problem. That Jude was trying to correct. That don't allow all these filthy dreamers, all these addict complainers. You sit down, they complain. You stand up, they complain. But where there's consecration, before I pray, that you, it will help you. Number two is to have scriptural convictions. Something that is strong within you. You don't play with it. Finally, you have settled commitments. Settle continually for the faith once you have unto the same. Speak continually about the faith once delivered unto the saints. Stress continually the faith once delivered unto the saints. Submit continually to the faith once delivered unto the saints. Stand continually for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Streamline continually every area of your life. The faith 
once the river comes to the sea, it may be so far. Continually, for the faith on the river unto the saints. Let the faith guide your affections, your aspirations, your affinities, your activities, and your afflictions. If there is any. Brethren, by the last days, we need to bring the faith back to this centrality of our lives and of our activities. There's no time we should go out of the path of the faith. After the event of 2012, September 6, when I lost four people, I went to the U.S. Some people will look at me afar off. Why is it? Is his egg still very okay? Many people were running. They didn't want to come close to me because they didn't know if I was totally okay. Because you can imagine what it means to lose four people. It can be very painful. And very devastating. I was talking to somebody painfully about the death of Pastor Taiwo Odukoya. It was pain in my heart. And he said, Pastor, that since the death of Bimbo Odukoya, he has never been the same again. But beyond that, not long after, when he remarried, the moment the second wife died. He was totally devastated. That within one week after that, the twin sister died. That was the end. Brethren, whatever is happening, stand for the faith. Rise to your feet. Let us pray.